If you're a smoker and you're trying to quit, but you're just not having any luck, there could be a new device in the arsenal to help you stop. It is a smart necklace that tracks your every puff, and it's something on the horizon at Northwestern Medicine. And here to explain how this all works is Nabil al -Sharafa. He is Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine at Northwest Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Sylvia. Thanks okay, for so having me. You've got the necklace on, right? That's it. Tell me uh, how this necklace works. I, I do. I'm really excited to tell you all about it. Um, well, you know, while we've made a lot of strides in the U.S. when it comes to smoke, reducing smoking rates, there's still a lot that we can do to improve smoking at home and globally. And so my students and I were thinking about ways we can help people quit smoking. And we realized it's a slippery slope, right? People will slip in here and there. But the question is sort of, we were always wondering, when does a slip turn into a full relapse? Is it after two puffs? Is it after four cigarettes? And so what is that tipping point and when do we intervene? People have been studying this for decades. They've been using self-report, different tools like self-report, mm -hmm. journaling, answering questions, but that's been, you know, people forget and it's inaccurate. People recently have been using wearable cameras, but that also, you know, is notorious for generating privacy concerns. So we came up with this uh, idea to detect and track smoking in real time while taking into account privacy concerns using uh, a heat, um, a thermal camera to capture heat. Okay, very so interesting. And this is something you're calling smoking topography, right? You say there are two distinct uh, purposes in, in using the smoking topography. So explain what it is you're doing, because you're saying it's all about the relapse. Is it one puff afterwards? Is it two? Explain how this works. Exactly. So then here embedded in here is a thermal camera. It's oriented towards the mouth. And so it captures heat, right? Your hand and cigarette as it approaches the mouth. It generates a heat map around your mouth. And so we taught it to be able to distinguish between smoking activity and other activity. And once it detects a smoking activity, it uh, further analyzes the data to be able to generate puffs, uh, puff duration, uh, uh, time between puffs, also puff volume or how much chemical exposure you're inhaling. So the idea might be that, you know, you want to quit smoking, you join a program, they give you this necklace and an accompanying app. And then let's say you have a stressful moment and, you know, you take a cigarette or you, re, uh, you know, have a slip, uh, the device will detect it and then send you a mindfulness text message or video to help you through that moment and remind you it's just a temporary setback and, you know, hopefully prevent. Oh, that's uh, good. Full yeah, because for a lot of people, they're thinking maybe that one slip, oh, never mind, I quit. But this, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep smoking. So let's talk about this, though. You guys have done clinical trials on this, right? What is the, how, does this work? How effective is it? Yeah, so now we've tested this, uh, you know, the first step when designing a wearable device is to validate it in a lab setting and in a real world setting. So now we validated it against, you know, certain standard measures to be able to measure and detect uh, smoking activity very reliably and smoking topography. So the next step now is for us to work with smoking, uh, you know, smoking programs that help you quit smoking uh, and uh, and then begin testing these interventions in a clinical trial and compare it, its efficacy right against mm. uh, you know typical or standard smoking programs out there okay so you still have a bit of a ways to go so this is something that's in the future but it's sounding promising i'm sure a lot of people would be able to look forward to have something like this because i hear it takes up to seven times for people to actually quit smoking nabil asharafa associate professor of preventive medicine at northwestern university's feinberg school of medicine thank you very fascinating good luck with this